if no one else is going to come, I, my head's really not into this. Um, you, I mean, oh, uh, yeah, I know you've got a lot here. on. Do you want to? Um, uh, it was just it was going to be the Zohar on Shavuot, but if you don't feel like doing it, and I can totally understand because it's very hot still and you've got traveling tomorrow, you've got a lot to do. Um, no, it's, it's not just that, it's just, you know, I just found out from us son when I went down for help. You what? Well, I didn't sin, hear, sorry, what? I said, I just, I went down to Mas to get help on filling out my you know, yearly tofus. Right. Oh, there you go. And um, they told me I should have, I should get a Roy Cheshbon because of the sale of the apartment. Okay. So I'm pretty freaked out because I assume that's going to cost me another few thousand shekels. <laughs> oh, dear. I mean, I don't know for sure, but, you know, given what it costs to do my American taxes, I would assume it's not going to be much less than that. And I just, you know, it's not an expense I was prepared for. Yeah. Um, you can take, um, uh, my sister has got a very good uh, chart accountant who is very kind and, uh, and he can just sort of give you sort of like, um, just advice without charging and then he'll tell you like then it's up to you you know at least he gives you the advice first yeah. i can find out from my yeah i can find out from my sister um uh his name and there's also somebody who linda stern told me about who um uh who gave me some free advice and it was very helpful i'll i'll get back to you on that after the class okay okay great fine all right, very good. Oh, good. Devor's here. Wonderful. OK, lovely. So we're going to learn the Zohar on uh, Leila de Kala. It's an opportunity to learn Zohar. It's a beautiful piece. I don't know if you've learned it with me before, but each year I learn it and each year it speaks to me in a different way. So um, we'll dedicate our learning to the um, bringing back of the rest of the hostages. Bezrat Hashem. It was a wonderful, wonderful Yeshua that we got for hostages back and I want to bless the soldiers and Baruch Hashem and thank God Hodul Hashem Kitov and uh, and ask can uh, can you keep going with the miracles please because it was a real miracle a real miracle and of course uh, and Liloy Nishmat our non Ben Zimra who gave his life uh, to save the the hostages ריבון עולמים ואדוני אדונים, אף רחמן וסליחות, מודים אנחנו לפניך, אדוני אלוהינו ולאי אבותינו, בקידה ובשתחוויה שקרבתנו לתורתך ולוודותך עבודת הקודש, ונתת לנו חלק בסודות תורתך הקדושה. מה אנו ומה חיינו אשר עשית עמנו חסד גדול כזה? על כן אנחנו מפילים תכנוננו לפניך. שתמחול ותסלח לכל חטאותינו ועוונותינו, ועל יהיו עוונותינו מבדילים בינינו לביניך, וכן יהיו רצון מלפניך, אדוני אלוהינו ולאבותינו, שתכונן את לבבינו לראתך ולבעתך, תקשיב אוזניך לדברינו אלה, ותפתח לבבינו הערל בסודות תורתך, ויהיה לימודינו זה נחת רוח, לפני כיסא כבודיך קרח ניחוח. ותאצל עלינו, או מקור נשמתנו בכל בחינתנו, שיתנוצצו ניצוצות עבודיך הקדושים, אשר על ידם גלית דברך אלה בעולם, וזכותם, וזכות אבותם, וזכות תורתם ותמימותם וקדושתם, יעמוד לנו לבל נכשל בדברים אלו, ובזכותם תראיננו במה שאנו לומדים, כמאמר נעים זמירות ישראל, גל עיניי והביט הנפלאות מתורתך, כי אדוני יתן חוכמה מפי יבדעת ותבונה, יהיו לראות צאן עם רפי, ויגון מבי לפניך, אדוני צורי וגורלי. אמן, כן יהיו רק צאן. נאו בן. אוקיי, so let me share my screen. share screen.
OK, so this is the traditional um, learning, all right, which is the article of the night of the bride. All right. And it's an article which describes the essence of Shavuot and uh, what its essence really is. OK, so we'll look at it. Kuf Kaf Hei. Rabbi Shimon. Um, if you want to follow in the book, Yocheved, it's the very first volume of the Zohar. OK, if you want to wait, I'll wait for you if you want to go get your book. Um, OK, <laughs> all right. Rabbi Shimon, have I a tea for the Eba or Aita? The Lady at the Kali Tabrat Babala, the Tanin and Kol Inun Havraya de Bene Hechala de Kala, it's Tarihu, but who Lelia? Lost the page. Okay, here we are. It's Lelia. The Kala is Damnat Lemehevolem Lioma Ochra Gokupa Babala, Lemeheve Ima Kolo who Lelia. Okay. Uliyoma achra lo alat lo chupa ele bahadaihu, vilein ikun bene chupata, the kevan da alat lo chupata, kutchebuchu shaela alehu, mivarechlon, umartelon, vituha de kala, zakaa hu kehon. Okay, one second, I just want to remind myself of um, Shalom's name, because I always want to dedicate the learning to Shalom. So then one second, I forget his name. Yeah. I'll just I'll just tell it to you. Okay, okay. Can you just tell it to me? It's Shalom Lev. Shalom Lev. Levi. Okay, great, thanks. All right, so Nishmat, Shalom Lev Ben David Halevi, who was an amazing man, who was uh Yochevet's husband and my Chavuta. So he is very close to us right now. I'm pretty sure. OK. Now then. So Rabbi Shimon, I will shave or sake the Torah. So Rabbi Shimon was sitting and practicing the Torah. Alayla, Shabbat Kala, on the night in which the bride, Shehia Malchut, which is the Malchut, the Malchut, the Shekhinah, the joint soul of all of the souls together, the Knesset Yisrael, is called the bride, okay? Mitchaberet Baba'ala, and she joins with her husband. Who's her husband? Hakodesh Baruchu. Shalamadnu Kola Haverim Shem Benehe Halakala. We've learned that all the companions who are the sons, the children, sorry, of the temple of the bride, it's not just men, it's men and women, it's everybody, okay? Who are practicing the Torah. So Chimbo Toa Laila need on that night, Shalamoch Orato, on which on the following day, Beyoma Shavuot, which is the day of Shavuot, Hakalano Edet Liotahat Chupa in Bala. The bride is intended to be under the Chupa with her husband. What is the Chupa? The Chupa is the wedding canopy which is made up of everybody's good deeds okay so everybody's good deeds go above and provide the wedding canopy okay for the hakodesh baruch for the union of hakodesh baruch and the bride lioti ma koloto alayla and the companions need to be with her with the shechina all through the night what does it mean by the word night? The night is not just the physical night. OK. The night means the time when God's face is hidden from us. That's the night. OK. And what it means is, is that during the time when God's face is hidden from us, 
we need to keep the faith, okay, that he is good and does good. That's what it means to, to create that connection with God throughout the night, throughout the time of, of disconnection, if you like. Lismachima, and we need to rejoice with her, betikuneha, with her rectification. What's her rectification? The Torah and mitzvot. Why is the, is the Torah and mitzvot the rectification of the malchut? And the answer is, is because it's only through the Torah and mitzvot that we learn how to let go of our will to receive for ourselves alone and how to learn how to give unconditionally. Okay? And that's why the Torah and mitzvot is her rectification. It's the rectification of of the vessel, the rectification of our will to receive. The hand will have sok Torah, that is to occupy ourselves with Torah, to practice the Torah in simple language. Mi Torah le neviim, the wisdom in the Torah, the wisdom in the prophets, the wisdom in the writings, the drashot, the, 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 the midrash, the wisdom in the Kabbalah, the sodot Torah. Because these are the rectification of the Shekhinah, all the souls together, and her jewellery. What is jewellery? Jewellery is an additional ornament, okay? Can have a very beautiful bride. And then she adds a pearl necklace. And it's not essential she's already beautiful but it's an addition okay and this has a meaning because the holy ari tells us that the whole of the basis of the tzimtzum was that the soul that the that the malchut of the ensof wanted wanted to make herself more beautiful by coming into affinity form with the creator so the Torah and mitzvot that we do are the jewelry, the decoration that bring us into affinity of form with the Creator. Vehi hakala, and she, the bride, that is the Shaholi Shachina, the Knesset Yisrael, Va'al Moteha, and her maidens. And I honestly can't remember offhand what the maidens are right now. And the Shechina comes and stands over their heads, over the heads of all who are practicing the Torah, who, all who are doing good deeds, all who are doing deeds, L'Shem Shemayim, okay? And she's rectified by them because she's taking, you're taking the will to receive and you're bringing it into the aspect of affinity of form through these deeds. And she's happy with them all through the night. Now oh, that's an interesting noise again. I really don't know where that's coming from because my telephone's quite far away now. And on the following day, on the day of Shavuot, she only comes to the chupa with them, with the companions. And they, the companions, who are practicing the Torah all through this night, the time of concealment. Are called the uh, sons of the chupa, the children of the chupa. I'm not going to say just b'nei, okay? The kevan sheban chupa. And since she comes to the chupa, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shoel Aleihim, the Holy Blessed One, asks after them, Mavarechutam, and blesses them, Umaaterutam b'itro teha shalakala, and crowns them with the crowns of the bride. What does that mean? That they receive the light of the Shekhinah. Ashrei chelkam, happy is their portion. Okay? So far, so good? Any questions? Okay. Your Dvarim explanation. Yesh beset shtei pirushim v'shnehem olim b'kanei echad. 
we can find here two explanations and they both come from the same root. Well, they both come up on the same reed or the same stem. OK. One. Kol galut nikret laila. All the days of exile are called the night. What is the night? This is the time when God's face is hidden from the children of Israel. And this is both in our private lives and it's also in our communal lives. Okay. And then all the forces of separation are governing the servants of God. Okay, it's very hard to do mitzvot. It's very difficult. We're in a difficult situation. In Kulze, nevertheless, Davka Be'et Hahi, it's at that time, Mitchaberet Hakalaba Ba'ala. It's that time that the joining between the bride and her husband actually takes place. So we've learned in our learning together. What brings two spiritual elements together? Okay, affinity of form, right? When two spiritual elements are in affinity of form, they come together. So what does this mean? At the time when the forces of separation, okay, there are a lot of power trying to turn us away from God. A lot of power to, of powers are trying to make us sad, anxious, fearful, um despairing okay these are all acting on us all right okay nevertheless if at those times we say we believe in hashem and in his goodness okay we have faith what are we doing that in the time which is forces are trying to separate we insist on staying in affinity of form. What are we doing by that? We're joining the Shekhinah, the Kala, the bride, with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, with the Holy Blessed One. Okay? So it's Dafka in the time of darkness, Dafka in the time which is hard, that we can join the bride with the husband. Al Yedei HaTorah mitzvot through the Torah, which is the wisdom, the heavenly wisdom which teaches us how, which shines its light on us, the Hamid's vote and the putting that wisdom into practice. Shelat Sadikim of the righteous. Hanikraim Ba'itahi, who called at that time the shame Tom Hindu Oaita, those who uphold the Torah. The Kolamadrigot Haniskavot Hanikot Razindo Aita. And all the high spiritual levels, which are called the in the meanings of the Torah, mitgalot al yadehim are revealed by them. Ki al kenheim nikraim osehim, because therefore they are called the makers. Shehem kivyachol osim shela Torah, as if they're making the Torah. How do people get called those who make the Torah? Because they make it manifest. They manifest the Torah. They bring it into a reality. They because they're living it. All right. And I can think of many, many, many incredible examples of people in this last period of time since October 7th who've made the Torah manifest. Incredible heroes. Mamash Giborim. Mamash Mamash. In their lives and in their, and in their deaths have absolutely given and made their Torah manifest. And so we find that the days of exile are called the night of the bride when she joins with her husband. And all those companions who of the children of the temple of the bride, they are upholding the Torah. Any questions?
ולאחר גמר התיקון, and following the end of the תיקון, והגאולה השלמה, and complete redemption, שהוא סוד הכתוב, which is in the, in the meaning of the scripture, והיה יום אחד ויוודע להשם, ולא יום ולא לילה, and it will be one day, when it will be known to God, neither day nor night, והיה לעת ערב יהיה אור, and it will be at the time of evening it will be light, this is actually a piece from Zechariah 14, which is entirely about the Gemara Tikkun. The Zohar tells us that the bride is invited to be on the following day under the wedding canopy with her husband. Okay, so then the worlds, the parts of fame that we've been learning, will all go up to higher levels, all right? Okay, the ban is the world of Nicodem, will join and now become Bina, and the Ma, which is the world of Atsilut, will become Ayin Bet. Okay, what does that mean? That the light of God will be shining completely. That, you know, that the light of God will be totally present. And so therefore it's this consciousness is considered as a totally new day and a new wedding canopy. And the tzadikim at that time are called the sons of the chupa, sorry, the children of the chupa, which means those who are actually just doing the Torah, but they don't have to manifest it, okay? Why not? Because then it said in Isaiah, and the world will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord like the water covers the sea. I, uh, my latest uh, version of my webinar that I've been working on, I, I, I found a beautiful video of the sea, just the waves going in and out. And I use that to illustrate this idea that we, you know, that, of what of the Gemara Tikkun is like, okay? It'd be natural for us to be one with God and have God consciousness in our experience. And since the Tzadikim through their good deeds, will raise up the consciousness of these different consciousnesses. What do they do? They draw on the Yir'ah, on their reverence for God, their faith from God, from the past. Actually create a new reality where we can still do good deeds. Okay? What does this mean? It appears at the Gemara Tikkun, this is what I've got so far, okay? Each year I learn it a bit differently. Um, it appears that at the Gemara Tikkun, we are going to have two possible avenues open to us. One is to receive the light of God that he wants to give us for the sake of giving, okay? The other one is to go the way of the tzaddik, who says, thank you very much, that's fantastic, but I only want to receive for the sake of giving when you want me to receive, but otherwise I prefer the way of giving. And in fact, this is what Rabbi Ashlag teaches is the way of Yaakov, the way of Bnei Israel. The way of Bnei Israel is that at the end of the Tikkun, we will just want to carry on the way of giving out of choice. And that's the way of the Tzadikim. So they pull on the Yir'ah from the Aval. Okay, they say, I much prefer to let go of, of, of knowledge 
and experience, I want to carry on giving. And it's difficult to imagine this, but um, there's a few incredible illustrations of this in the work of Rabbi Ashlag. One is his own story, which appears in one of the early chapters, I think the second chapter of Master of the Ladder, when he himself reached his own personal Gemara Tikkun, and he was enlightened in a state of enlightenment, and he came to his teacher, the Rabbi of Bells, and the Rabbi of Bells did not, imp and not showed him quite openly that he did not approve, and he taught him that even when you get to your own Gemara Tikkun for the sake of receiving everything for the sake of giving, you now then have to start again with Yerat Hashem. And he taught him that. And in fact, Rabbi Ashag adopted that and he did that. And, uh, and that's how he came to the incredible heights he came to. Because it's like, you know, you can reach your Gemara Tikkun again and again and again like that. To prefer giving rather than receiving. Any questions on that paragraph? It's a little bit more tricky. No? Anybody want to put something in the chat or call out or something? Well, put in the chat if it's OK, and then I'll carry on. No questions. All right. What about you, Yochabed? No questions. All right. Hapeirush Hashini. The second explanation. Vashelel Shavuot. Nikra Leila de Kalit Chabat Mabala. Is that the night of Shavuot is also designated the night in which the bride joins with her husband. He as who as damnat lemehevoi beyom ha'achra gochupa v'baala. Because then... Um, she, wait, he, sorry, because then she is invited to be on the following day under the wedding canopy with her husband, that is the Holy Shekhinah, the Knesset Yisrael. That is the new day, is Shavuot. Shuyom Kabbalata Torah, which is the day of the receiving of the Torah. Omnam Huinyan Echad Mamash Imabiorishon. However, it really is one issue, one uh, essence with the first explanation. Because the day of the receiving of the Torah was already the aspect of the end of the Tikkun. In the inner meaning of um, death is swallowed up forever. And the Lord blotted, Lord, Lord God blotted away tears from off all faces. As the sages have explained on the verse engraved on the tablets, don't read engraved, read freedom. Because freedom, it comes, because the Torah brings freedom from the angel of death. What's the angel of death? Separation from God. The Torah teaches us how not to be separated from God again. That's what it means. The end of the Tikkun means that death is swallowed up forever, meaning separation from God is swallowed up forever. All right? That's what it means. The Torah, because it teaches us how to give unconditionally, and without the Torah, we actually don't know how to give unconditionally. So the Torah, because it teaches us, it, it therefore is the means by which we swallow up death forever. That is that we no longer get into a state where we're separated from the Creator. 
אלא מלחמה צריכה את העגל, אבל בגלל הסין של הקרף, גולדן קרף, חזרו וקלקלו את התיקון. The children of Israel at that time uh, got the tic- you know, messed up the tikkun. So how could that be? Okay? Because if they've already received the Torah and it was the end of the tikkun, how could they mess up the tikkun already? If you see what I mean. And the answer is, what Rabbi Ashrag writes, I think it's in Matan Torah, he writes a fascinating idea. He writes that the time of receiving and the time of giving in spirituality can be very distant. In the physical world, if I give you something, you receive it, okay? Like if you were sitting next to me and I passed you my cup of tea, you'd be holding my cup of tea, okay? But in the spiritual reality, the time of giving and the time of receiving can be very distant. In other words, God gives us, offers us the opportunity. Whether we're actually ready to receive it or not is another matter. So it's very clear from what happened is that the children of Israel, they definitely wanted to accept the Torah. They said, Na'asev and Ishma, okay? And they had the incredible experience of receiving the light of God, but it, their vessels were not quite ready yet. It was a bit, you know, bashel. It was a bit premature. Very similar to what happened to the, to the uh, Chet Eitz Haddad, because that was also premature, all right? So they messed up the Tikkun with a golden calf. But the Kabbalat Torah that we receive at the Gemara Tikkun will be finished, will be like the completion, all right, of what have started on Mount Sinai. So the essence of the day of receiving the Torah is actually one, is the same essence, with the Gemara Tikkun. It's just that in time, They're a bit separated, if you see what I mean. V'nimtza shabalayla kodem kabalat ha-Torah. So we find that in the time of exile, the night which precedes our actual receiving of the Torah, nigmaru ba'kon ha-zivugim shbemerei ha-stara are finished. All the interactions between light and vessel which took place during the time of God's concealment from us. And therefore, this night is designated as the night of the bride when she joins with her husband. When she's invited to be on the following day, under the wedding canopy with her husband, Shuhaga Shavuot, which is the, f- the festival of Shavuot, Shabon Nigmar Tikkun, on which the Tikkun is finished, Becherut Mi Malach in freedom from the angel of death, in freedom from our will to receive ourselves alone, in, in freedom from, also from giving for the sake of receiving, in freedom from separation, okay? Shu Azman, Shatzadikim al de Masema Tovim, and the and the this time the Tzadikim through their good deeds, what good deeds, that they go back to Yirah. That they go back to reverence, they go back to faith. Okay, they say, okay, thank you very much, that's great, wonderful, and now we're going to go back to faith. We want to go back to giving. Okay? Or Simchupahatasha. They make a new wedding canopy. לקלה for the יותר, and here it's more convenient for me or more comfortable for me. This is Bala Sulam speaking. to continue this explanation in the way of the first explanation. 
by my only daughter and who's ever interested, you call out Tika Devarim al Yemei al Yom Hashavuot can um, copy the matters to the day of Shavuot, Kinyan Echad Hu, because it is one issue. Okay. I'm going to stop there for a second. Okay, do you question? question. Yes. Question. Does this mean then that with Matan Torah, Am Israel was um, operating from the will to give, and then with Chet Ha'egel, it turned into the will to receive for oneself alone? I mean, that's what it seems like. I would say, in a sense, yeah, I think you're right. Um, like this, like this, like this. Um, on the day of the Kabbalah Torah, okay, we have Na'asei V'nishma. The children of Israel said Na'asei V'nishma. We will do and we will, um, uh, sorry, we will do in faith and afterwards we'll understand. So they definitely received the Torah in faith. Absolutely right, 100% right. And then they received this incredible um, light of God just pouring into their consciousness. And they heard the first two uh, mitzvot from God, debrot from God, and they said to Moses, you listen to the rest, because if we carry on, we will surely die. Meaning that if they were to hear it anymore, they don't have the strength to receive the rest of the Torah for the sake of giving. They, were, they felt they were getting overwhelmed. Okay? So they told Moses, that they said been, to them, That would have been Shvirat HaKelim. Exactly, exactly the same thing as Shvirat HaKelim, totally. Hold on a second, I'm just going to close the window here because there's number no, one a bit of noise. No, it's my window. It's from my side. No, it's also from mine. Don't worry, my dearie. But it's both sides. I've and just got my. You have the same traffic I do. <laughs> One second. It's it's uh, my microphone has just got stuck and I can't get it off. One minute. Right. Okay. One second. Okay, that's a lot better, thanks. Alright. Yes, yes, that's actually right. So the at that point they were getting overwhelmed. So they said, if you if we carry on hearing this voice of God, there's no way we're going to be able to receive for the sake of giving. So they were kind of thing they were aware at that point. Um but then 40 days later, when Moses is and their reckoning was late. And wasn't there to, and Moses is, what does it mean Moses, Boshesh Lavo, Moses was uh, late coming down the mountain. What do you mean? They had a watch or something? Okay. And, you know, he's not arrived by, you know, six o'clock. Oh dear. He's not going to be here. He's going to, not gonna say, I mean, you know, people didn't work like that in those days. Boshesh Lavo means the aspect of Moses was kind of missing. What's the aspect of Moses? Faith. Okay. He's the aspect of Moses within us. And so Moses, the aspect of Moses was kind of missing for some reason on that 40th day. OK, and all they could think about was this tremendous light that they received in their consciousness or even of, of the will to receive, pouring it, you know, using their will to receive. Now, there's something very interesting about the Cheta Egel, as it is for all these other sins. The, you cannot receive any light any real light for your will to receive for yourself alone. The moment you start receiving for your will to receive for yourself alone, the light leaves. All right. But the will to receive 
for the sake of giving, OK? There's also you're not allowed just to bring it any time you want. That was the sin of their Chaita Ego. They weren't waiting for God to give them the will to receive for the sake of giving. They wanted to bring it themselves. They wanted to have that same incredible sweet experience, okay, of the of the light of God infusing them, okay. And it's not that they knew they couldn't do it for, them, for themselves alone. If they if they didn't uh, do it for themselves alone, they wouldn't get anything anyhow. So they needed Aaron. They needed Aaron, who's chesed, to make the golden calf for them. Okay, to make the um, uh, to pull this energy for the will to receive that would be kiilu for the sake of giving, but they really wanted it because they wanted to enjoy that experience again. And that was possible because they, because the point of what you do that? <clears throat> yeah it sounds here like there's a link between that and between our own sons offering you know the um, inappropriate fire yes God. yes 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 there's definite connection yes definitely I mean, it's the same kind of an action. It is in a way, yes. Yeah, and I'm that's just right. wondering. I, I'm wondering now, but what I'm wondering now is whether the Chet Egel actually led to that later on. Whether that might have been Alon's Tikkun himself for the part he played in the Chet Egel. Well, that's an interesting thought, Yochavid. It really is. I've not, I've not seen that written, but it's a, that's a very interesting thought. A very interesting thought. Aaron did tremendous tshuva on it, though. I mean, uh, he did. I'm sure he did, but the, you know, the sins of the fathers who visit upon the sons for eight, what is it, seven generations? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's sort of in my head, that's all. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's an interesting idea. Oh, gosh. It looked like flying objects flying just out of the window. Out of a, Maybe it's a drone or something. It's pretty low. Oh, dear. Anyhow. Um, uh, Weird, weird life we live at the moment with flying objects flying around the sky, honestly. Um, so where were we? Yes. Um, the issue is, is that the will to receive for the sake of giving, even at the Gemara Tikkun, the Tzadikim give up on that. And they go back to Emunah. That's the point. And that is the way of B'nai Yisrael. The way of B'nai Yisrael is that even the receiving for the sake of giving, we give up, we say, no, thank you, God, it was very pleasant, thank you very much, but we want to give, go back to giving to you because our giving to you is more precious to us than our receiving from you, even this great light. We want to be able to give. So B'nai Yisrael, the way of B'nai Yisrael is the way of giving, okay? And this is called B'nai Yaakov. That's why we call B'nai Yaakov, because this, we are wanting to be giving, whereas the aspect of Esau, he just says, okay, receiving for the sake of giving, I'll be happy to do that. And we don't want to do that. We want to be the way of, the, at the Gemara Tikkun, even with the great light of God coming, and it is for the sake of giving, we say, ah, one minute, thanks, and we go back to giving. But if God wants us to receive for the sake of giving, because it's in his interest that he wants, then we're permitted to. OK, but it's just that we don't pull it towards ourselves. All right. So this is, for example, the reason why Mordechai accepted the robes of, of, of Malchut. OK, uh, 
uh, when the king told him to dress, you know, with the crown and the malchut and whatever, okay? He accepted that. Why did he accept it? Because he needed, to, he needed the light of Chochmah to bring about redemption for the people of Israel, to save the people of Israel. So that's why he accepted it. Rabbi Ashlag also, following the teachings of the Rabbi of Bells, he then made it very clear that he wasn't interested in spiritual uh, levels. But when he was told, you know, that he needed to do his work, then he came to Eretz Israel, and then again the flood, the, 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 all his learning of the, all his um, wisdom that he received from the to do the from the Ari and the Peirusha Sulam, it's all receiving for the sake of giving. But he was always willing to the moment it wasn't coming, he was to say, okay, fine, you know, no problem. Okay, so it's when God wants it, not when we want. And that's the difference here. This is very, very interesting. Um, well, we, uh, 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 wait a minute. Where were we up to? Um, okay, yeah, 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 that, right. Okay, so he says, right, right. V'zesh katuv, kol inon chavraya v'chule, elu atom chind oraita, nikreim b'nei hechala dekala. All the, uh, those who uphold the Torah, who are called the companions of the, the sons of the temple of the bride, heim tzrechim leot dvukim b'shechina k'dosha. They need to be in affinity of form with the holy shechina. Hanikrit Kala, which is called the Kala, Kola Hulelia Shalagalut, right through the night of exile. Ki as be me hagalut hi mitatkenet, because it's during the days of exile that she's rectified Alide Tomchind Oraita through those who uphold the Torah the Torah. Bukol Elua Ma Simatovim through all the good deeds, Va Torah, Va Mitzvot, Shemusim, the Torah and Mitzvot which they do. Until she's completely purified from the aspect of good and evil. Until she's completely good with no evil. And they are invited to be, and she becomes uh, as if there is no doing, it's just being in the Torah. There's no aspect of doing at all. She's completely now good without any evil. And therefore we need those who uphold the Torah, which are the children of the Temple of the Bride, to rejoice with her on this great Tikkun, which is done in by in the Shekhinah by then. Vezesh katuv lemechadei ima bitukanaha to rejoice with her in her tikkun. Dihi itatkanat lemalei b'waita that she's rectified with those who practice the Torah. Tachainu b'tikkunim ha'ba'im l'faneinu in the tikkunim which are coming before us. Mitorah l'neviim from Torah to l'neviim v'kule shetzuchim la'asotam b'simcha. So we need to do the mitzvot with joy. Okay, any more questions? Okay, v'inenit ba'er. Ha'shekol ha'madregot v'gilu yuasim d'oraita, sh'em b'gin ha'shechina, sorry, sh'em b'nyan ha'shechina l'gamar tikuna, so now we've explained that all these spiritual levels and the manifestation of the inner meanings of the Torah, which is the building of the Shekhinah to get to the end of Hetikun, all these are done only by those who uphold the Torah in the time of her exile. 
ולפיכך כל אלו המדרגות והקומות יוצאות בזמן הגלות נקראות תיקונה דקלה ותכשיטה. And therefore all these spiritual levels um, which come forth during the time of exile are called the rectification of the bride and her jewelry. Ve'eloheim, sholech mefaret, and the Zohar goes on and, and details them. Torah, nevi'im v'kule. Okay, Torah, nevi'im, nevi'im k'tuvim, etc., etc. Furchesed gavur tiferet usod Torah. Netzach v'chod, sorry, is called nevi'im. And the Malchut itself is the Ketuvim. Vahamochin de Vav Ketzavot Shemam Shechin La and the light of Vav Ketzavot, which is the first nine Svirot, which is comes to her, is Sod Midrashot the Kar'e, is the Midrash, and I suppose the Peirushim and things. Vahamochin de Gimel Rishonot, and the light of Gimel Rishonot, the highest light of all, Shemam Shechin La Usod Razei Dachochmata. Is the inner meaning of the Kabbalah. Ki kol elu tikkunim tzuchim lamshicham lekala ba'hu leila, and all these tikkunim need to be, need to we need to bring them to the to the shechina during that night. Shabahem nigmeret hakala legmar tikkun, in which the kala is finished at the end of the tikkun. Shusod yom adchupa, which is the day of the chupa. Okay. All right. And she and her handmaidens. Oh, here we go. Hamalachim shibahem mulubashim akeim da huain de malchut de matsava rishon. Heni koot alamot hamashamshot le shechina. Okay. The angels in whom are clothed the vessels of receiving of the first of the malchut. In its first state, which is Tzimtzum Aleph, are called the Alamot, who serve the Shekhinah, the maidens who serve the Shekhinah, maybe because they're hidden, seems to be the same word. And the Shekhinah is upheld over their heads, that is, Inon Tamchin Doraita, those who are upholding the Torah, the Sod Va'al Roshi Shekhinat El, in the inner meaning of above my head is the presence of God, the Shekhinah. And together with the Shekhinah of these angels who use the aspect of Tzimtzum Aleph. And she's happy with them and she's rectified with them. And she has pleasure with them all through the night. Dahainu Bakol Meshach Zmana Tikunim and Kate Laila. That is throughout all the time of the Tikunim, which is called the night. Zesh Katuv Ulioma Ochwa, and this is what is written that on the following day, Shabiyom Gamar Tikunu Yoma Chupa, which is on the day of the end of the Tikun, which is the day of the Chupa, Lo Tuchali Kanes the Chupa Ela Beilen Hatomchin Doraita. She can only come to the Chupa. By those who are upholding the Torah, Shebanu v'tiknota, who built her up and corrected her, v'kol atzorech in all its need, mitorah l'neviim, from the Torah to the prophets, v'lachay nikraim, b'nei nikraim, sorry, and therefore they are called b'nei chupata, the sons of her chupa. As we said, the chupa itself is made from the uh, good deeds. And what is written that since uh, uh, that since she goes up to the Kupa with them, etc. You already have learned, this is in a previous place in the Zohar, it's a wonderful place, where he says that the end of the Tikkun doesn't bring any, anything new with it. Okay? But the highest light, which is in Atik Yomin, which is Keter of Atzilut, is gathered together all the prayers and all the good deeds, and all the light that came down, 
וכל הזיווגים וכל המדרגות in all the meetings with the love vessel and the light and all the spiritual levels that came forth. שיצאו משתל פי שנה, which came out during the 6,000 years of the world's existence, בזה אחר זה, one after the other, לזיווג אחד, become one זיווג, ולקומה אחת, and one level of light, רב ויקיע, רב, I think is the, relates to the order חסדים, ויקיע relates to the order חוכמה, and it's all there together, so everything that we ever did, to, to help the Shekhinah in all that time, the, the light that we, that we brought down and the light from below to above and the light that came from above to below, all this joins together in one tremendous evoke and brings forth one level of light, and through this everything is fixed together because at that moment when everybody receives this incredible light, Everybody does tshuva me'ava. Everybody does tshuva from love. Okay? And that's the Gemara Tikkun. Ve'az tikanes ha'kala l'kupa. And then the bride comes into her new wedding canopy. Ve'zeh she'katov kud shebuchu she'al alehu. And the Holy Blessed One asks after them. Ta'hainu al kol echad ve'echad. He asks after every single one. שאלה פעמיים נוקבין לזיווג עליון, whoever did one aspect of my נוקבין, מצווה, to the highest light, כי כביכול יכול יושב ומחכה, because as if he's sitting and waiting, עד שהתקבצו כולם, until all of them are gathered together. ונמצא שואל ומחכה על כל אחד ואחד, and we find that he's asking and waiting for every single one. And once they all gather together, he does this tremendous zivug, which is Rav Pa'alim of all the actions, all gathered together, and blesses them and crowns them with this light. And all of them are blessed and, and receive this light at one moment. And the, and the tikkun is finished, which is called the light of the bride. Okay, wow. I think this piece is phenomenal. All right, anything anybody wants to add or, or anything? <laughs> Dora says very nice. Okay, great. What about you, your heaven? Um, but Atara is also like the crown. I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. Atara. <clears throat> It's also the yes, know, like the crown. Yes, that's right. The crown. It's also the light. Yes. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. I thought it was beautiful. I think it's beautiful. I, I mean, think it's it one just, of the most beautiful pieces of Zohar. It's, it's it goes on, by the way. This whole this whole uh, piece is amazing, amazing article. It took me the first time I learned it. it took me about a year. It was, it's a very long article, in fact. But it's really amazing. It's a beautiful, beautiful article. Yeah, Listen, it's not a shame. We'll finish what we're doing in, uh, in the, in the um, uh, work of the RE. And the purpose of learning this work in the RE is to be able to, is to give us the tools that we're able to be able to read the Zoha. That's what we want to do. Okay? And you can see we're getting there. You know, the language, I mean, I can teach, I can give over this material I just did to a class who doesn't have the background that you guys have now got. And it doesn't come out the same. I mean, I can give the outline and I can sort of say, you know, that Shavuot and the end of the Tikkun is the same essence, whatever. But they don't understand all the detail there because they haven't got the background. Okay. Wait and a minute, you did a, 
Just, just one second. <clears throat> if Shavuot is, I mean, it sounds like Shavuot is similar to the Mar Hatikun. It's similar to the Gemara Tikkun, yes. The same essence. Okay. So then this comes around every year. That's right. And it sounds as if the light that we receive on Shavuot is... I, I just wonder whether there's a parallel between you know, between this process of going from Pesach to Shavuot and the process of going from Rosh Hashanah to um, Simchat Torah, is there a similar, because it, it seems yes. so similar, the closeness of Hashem to Am Israel, yeah. I mean, there's this tremendous buildup. Um, I think you're absolutely right. I think it begins. The parallel, I would say, begins like Rosh Chodesh Elul. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think absolutely you're right. And then you've got 50 days to Yom Kippur, more or less, or maybe Simchas Torah. I'd have to figure that one out. You've got 30 days of Rosh Chod of Elul, haven't you? It's 30. And then by the time you've got the extra bits in between, um, five days in between uh, Yom Kippur, you've got, wait a minute, 10 days of, of your making. Well, that gives you 40. And then you've got a few days between, five days, I think, maximum, between um, Yom Kippur and 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 Sukkot that gives you 45 and then I Sukkot itself yeah yeah you you're pretty well the, you're pretty well on target you're right you're absolutely right you're absolutely right so you're completely right um I mean I think the manifestations are a bit different you know the energy is um, different because the energy for Pesach and Shavuot is the energy of Chesed and the and of love and the energy of of uh, from in Elul Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur is the aspect of din. But uh, so it's two sides of the, of the so, same. Um, it's, it's the same like, point. So on one side, it's you know, it's like left side, right side. Yeah. Yes, 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 and yes. The you're combination right. of the two. Yes, that's right. Yeah, totally. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Beautiful. Now, because this, you know, this piece you just read, I mean, there's a tremendous, there's a tremendous buildup. I mean, it's, you know, there's this huge crescendo going on. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyway, well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Oh, I'm the only one left. She left. <laughs> oh. <A> what? <laughs> Devara left. Devara left. Yeah, Devara left. Yeah, yeah. She's got to go. She always has a shield straight after or something. I think yeah. if people come to the house, she's got to, yeah, she's, she always has to go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. All right, very good.